everyone and welcome to EduSearch Small Talk series where we discuss some key topics related to common medical and surgical practice. So as you can see, our today's topic is a very commonly asked question and a very important topic for all the students out there where we are going to discuss the anatomy of aorta and very few books give this completely in one section. Uh, the parts of aorta are divided into thoracic, descending, and all of them are discussed separately usually. What we are trying to do is we are trying to provide a complete vascular anatomy. So in this video, we are going to discuss all the parts of aorta and its key branches. Some of our previous videos have already discussed some of key branches of some parts of aorta. So that I am going to list in this video and the remaining arteries we will discuss in upcoming sections. So let us first see what are the parts of aorta, how it begins, how it ends, and then we will see some of the key branches of these different parts of aorta. So as we all know, at the base of left ventricle, there is the aortic annulus, whose surface landmark is the third left costal cartilage lower border. This is the part from where the ascending aorta starts, right? This is the part from where the ascending aorta starts and the ascending aorta from third left costal cartilage lower border goes up to upper border of second right costal cartilage. So ascending aorta travels from left to right and up to the level of T4 or sternal angle. These are all multiple choice questions that I have tried to combine into a single slide. So ascending aorta begins at the aortic annulus, which is the base of the left ventricle at the level of lower border of third left costal cartilage. And it ends at T4, which is also known as sternal angle. And anteriorly, this is second right costal cartilage upper border. This is the part where arch of aorta begins. It goes posteriorly and to the left. And it ends again at the level of T4, so essentially the arch of aorta is in the superior mediastinum and it ends at T4, which is upper border of second left costal cartilage because the arch of aorta travels from right to left and posterior. From this point, that is from T4 to T12 is the descending thoracic aorta, right? It is descending downwards and this green part is the descending thoracic aorta. At T12, it crosses the diaphragm and it becomes the abdominal aorta up to L4 lower border. These are the vertebral levels. L4 lower border is where the abdominal aorta ends by dividing into right and left common iliac artery. Right? It divides into right and left common iliac artery. So these are essentially the four key parts of aorta. That is the ascending aorta between lower border of third left costal cartilage and upper border of second right costal cartilage. Thoracic level four is very important to remember. It is also known as sternal angle. Arch of aorta begins and ends at thoracic level four or sternal angle and its entire part is in the superior mediastinum. From thoracic vertebra four to thoracic vertebra 12 is the descending thoracic aorta and from thoracic vertebra 12 to lower border of L4 is the abdominal aorta, which ends by dividing into right and left common iliac artery. Right? Now, we will see some of the branches of the different parts of aorta. So let us see. So in this slide, we are going to focus on these two parts. That is the ascending aorta, which is 5 centimeters long and which ends at thoracic vertebra 4, as we discussed previously and the arch of aorta. So let us see the branches of these two parts. The ascending aorta at its origin give rise to right and left coronary arteries. I'm sure all of you know these are the arteries which supply the heart. So right and left coronary arteries arise from the origin of the ascending aorta. Coming to arch of aorta, the largest branch of arch of aorta is the brachiocephalic artery or the innominate artery, that is the other name of brachiocephalic artery. The name brachiocephalic is very apt because 
this is the artery which is going to give rise to two very important branches in the right side of the body. Before that, let us see the other branches of arch of aorta. So the second branch is the left common carotid artery and left subclavian artery. Right? Subclavian means below the clavicle. So you would imagine where are the right branches. So like I said, the brachiocephalic artery gives rise to the two right-sided branches. Brachio means arm and the subclavian artery is going to become the brachial artery as you all know. And kephalic, most of the common carotid artery branches supply the kephalus or the head, right? So that is why the name brachiocephalic is very apt. It is also known as innominate artery. Just like ascending aorta, it is 5 centimeters long and the division location or surface landmark is the upper border of right sternoclavicular joint, right? These are all multiple choice questions. So I have tried to combine all of them into these slides. One important branch that we can remember here is a branch of subclavian artery, which is the vertebral artery. So right vertebral artery is a branch of right subclavian artery and left vertebral artery is a branch of left subclavian artery. So a quick revision, ascending aorta gives two branches, which is right and left coronary arteries. Arch of aorta gives rise to three branches, which is brachiocephalic artery, common carotid and subclavian on the left side, and brachiocephalic gives rise to common carotid and subclavian on the right side. And both subclavian give rise to the vertebral artery. So if you can make out the Ascending aorta is the first part and it gives rise to two branches. Arch of aorta is the second part and it gives rise to three branches. So now we come to the descending thoracic aorta. Like I have already said, it goes from thoracic vertebra T4 to thoracic vertebra T12. And it has two different types of arteries. It supplies the viscera or the organs which are unpaired arteries and it supplies the parietes which are the paired arteries. Discussing the visceral arteries first, it gives rise to two left bronchial arteries. These are the arteries which supply the left lung, known as the left bronchial artery. So a very commonly asked question is, where do the right bronchial artery arise from, right? So as you can see in the right lower corner of your screen, the right bronchial artery is one in number, whereas left bronchial arteries are two in number. And the right bronchial artery can arise from third posterior intercostal artery or upper left bronchial artery. This is a very commonly asked question again. So always try to remember these vessels together, left bronchial, right bronchial, right? Going ahead, the descending thoracic aorta also gives rise to a pericardial artery, esophageal arteries to supply the lower third of the esophagus and mediastinal arteries. So these are visceral arteries and these are unpaired arteries. Now coming to parietal arteries, there are nine posterior intercostal arteries from third to 11th intercostal space, right? Where are the first and second coming from? We will see in upcoming videos. The 12th rib does not have a space below it. So that is known as a subcostal artery. This subcostal artery on both sides again come from descending thoracic aorta. Another important branch is superior phrenic artery, right? So it gives rise to nine posterior intercostal arteries from third to 11th intercostal space. It gives rise to subcostal artery and it gives rise to superior phrenic artery. Now coming to the last part of aorta, as far as the branches are concerned, this is the abdominal aorta, which arises at the level of thoracic vertebra T12 or where the aorta crosses the diaphragm and it extends up to lower border of L4 where it ends by dividing into right and left common iliac arteries. Abdominal aorta has branches in three directions, ventral, lateral and dorsal. Let us see which they are. Ventral at thoracic vertebra 12 level is the celiac artery. At lumbar vertebra L1 level is the superior mesenteric artery. And at lumbar vertebra L3 level is the inferior mesenteric artery. These are the ventral branches. 
right? So there are three ventral branches of abdominal aorta: celiac artery, superior mesenteric artery, and inferior mesenteric artery. Coming to lateral branches, the lateral are paired, and there are four lateral branches. These are the inferior phrenic artery, the middle suprarenal artery, the renal artery, and gonadal artery. Right. So these are four lateral paired branches of abdominal aorta. So we have seen three unpaired ventral branches. We have seen four lateral paired branches. Now we will see the dorsal. Very easy to remember. These are the four paired lumbar arteries, right? Just like the descending thoracic aorta gave rise to the intercostal arteries, the abdominal aorta gives rise to the lumbar arteries. And for the sacral region, there is one unpaired median sacral artery, right? So these are the branches of the abdominal aorta. The key to remember is there are three unpaired ventral arteries, four paired lateral arteries, and four paired and one unpaired dorsal arteries. The ventral are celiac, superior mesenteric, inferior mesenteric, or the arteries which supply the gut. The lateral are kidney, suprarenal, diaphragm, and gonadal, and the dorsal are lumbar arteries and the median sacral arteries. Now, out of all these arteries. If you have seen this video on arterial blood supply of liver, we have already discussed the celiac artery, which is the first ventral branch of abdominal aorta at thoracic level 12. If you have not seen this video, kindly go through it because it describes the entire celiac axis and also supplies the intrahepatic arterial blood supply of liver. On our video on the anatomy of colon and its surgical relevance based on vessels, we have discussed this diagram in detail of superior mesenteric artery, which is the second anterior branch of the abdominal aorta. Again, if you have not seen the video, we put the link in the description. Kindly have a look at this video as well. And third, inferior mesenteric artery, we have also discussed in the video on colorectal anatomy and surgical basis. So essentially the three major ventral branches of abdominal aorta we have already discussed. We have also discussed the tracing of artery on the CT scan. So all these videos now can make sense when you see all of them one by one so that your entire vascular tree starts forming in your mind which helps in your exam. So if you have not seen these three videos, I will share the links in the description below. So do have a look. So in upcoming talks, to complete the entire vascular tree, we will discuss the common carotid artery in detail. We will discuss the subclavian artery in detail, the common iliac artery in detail. We will also discuss some thoracic arteries of importance. And there are some couplets like the right and the left bronchial artery that I showed you. Some commonly asked couplets are the areas which are confusing, like the left bronchial artery coming from descending thoracic aorta, but the right bronchial artery not coming from the descending thoracic aorta. So these couplets and triplets in vessels, we will discuss as commonly asked questions in upcoming talks so that this area, this vascular system is clear conceptually as well as for your exams in your mind. I hope this approach helps you in preparing these difficult anatomy topics. Feel free to share this to your colleagues and send in your comments and reviews to learn with reducers at the rate gmail.com or below in the description in the comment section so that we can come to know how these videos help you and what topics we can include in our upcoming sessions. Thank you.